Hi there, welcome to the Mind Lab English Language. Today we'll be looking at the world of child language acquisition. Now there are several stages of language acquisition that children go through as they learn to speak. First we start with the pre-verbal stage which is seen at around six to eight months. Whilst they might not be able to say any words in this stage, it is a vital part of learning language. At this stage, children will make simple pre-linguistic single syllable sounds. Next is the holophrastic or one word stage. After about nine months, they begin to use single words, often nouns. They will use these words alongside actions to convey further meaning. For example, pointing to a toy when saying toy would mean I want the toy. However, shrugging when saying toy would mean, where is the toy? Quite often, we will see examples of overextension and underextension during this stage, such as saying cat when referring to a cat, a dog, or a sheep, alternatively saying bowl to refer to plastic bowls only and not all bowls. If a child does not completely understand how to say a certain part of a word, such as the F in fish, they will replace it with something they do know, like pish or tish. At around 18 months comes the two-word stage which involves combining words for further meaning. A child might say no bed, meaning they don't want to go to bed. When saying daddy going, we see some grammatical rules are being applied, such as the addition of the suffix ing to create an action verb. However, others such as the auxiliary verb is has been omitted. Finally, we have the telegraphic stage, named as such as it is a similar to a telegram, where there is just enough information transmitted to create a structured sentence. Three and four word sentences are starting to be said and they are expanding their syntax and vocabulary. Also, more rules of grammar are being followed. This does, however, lead to overgeneralization. For example, a child might understand that the suffix ed is needed on a verb to create the past tense version, but not know when not to use it, such as, I eated my food and he bring me it. This can also be seen with making plural nouns, such as mans instead of men and mouses instead of mice. Now we are going to head over to our expert to see how this can be applied to an exam style question. Hello, I'll be taking you through a short section of the type of transcript you'll be given in your exam and we're going to analyse it. Louise is two years and six months old and is sitting with her mum who is pointing to her feet. Mum, what's that? Louise, a footsie. Mum pointing to both feet, what are these? Louise, two footsies. No, two feetsies, I mean. Here we can see the child is aware of the overgeneralization of the rule and so makes a self-correction. She remembers the irregular plural of foot is feet, not foots, but then she adds the S to the corrected plural to form a double plural, feetsies. The fact she says I mean shows a self-conscious correction from her mistake. Remember this when it comes to your exam. See you next time. Welcome back. Now that we're familiar with the stages of child language acquisition, let's take a look at some of the theories behind how children learn language. The first is the behavioural theory. B.F. Skinner was a theorist who believed that children learn language from the environment and their experiences. He describes babies as empty vessels, which language had to be put into. Skinner believed operant conditioning was the key to a child's ability to learn language. If a child says daddy, they are rewarded with smiles and attention. This is called positive reinforcement. This theory also suggests children learn by observation and imitation, which can be seen as regional accents can often be heard, something which can only be learned through observation. Another is the theory of innateness. The idea that children are born with an understanding of the rules of language and they simply need to acquire the vocabulary. Noam Chomsky suggests that everyone is born with a built-in language acquisition device, or LAD, an innate sense of language. He argues that it would be impossible for children to learn language from their environment, as they do not receive enough information to apply the many complex grammatical rules 
in every language. In 1958, Jean Burko created the Wug test. She would show a child a picture of an imaginary animal and say, this is a Wug. She would then show them a picture of another and say, now there are two. There are two, and the child would say, Wugs. This supports Chomsky's theory as the child applied the grammatical rule that to pluralize a noun, you would generally add an S, a rule which they could not have learned from their environment as they had never heard of this animal before. That's it for this episode. Don't forget that over on our website, there is a quiz to test your knowledge. Next week, we are going to be looking at language change through time. So please subscribe and check out our social media. We've been the Mind Lab. Thanks for watching. <laughs>